Duke controls the opening tip. Nicole Erickson handling the ball outside. Douglas is on her. They both play a three-guard offense. Peppy Brown who loves to drive. She really sets the tone for Duke. And how she's able to blow by them is Michelle Van Gort clears out of that lane to open it up for Peppy Brown. Watch for Duke to play a triangle and two. Over Van Gorp, the shot won't go for Camille Cooper. Purdue is a team that their post players, Duhart and Cooper, don't score a lot of points by getting the ball in the low post that much. They get it when Purdue is able to drive, penetrate, and dish off. Howard guarded by White McCarty looking for a screen and gets it. And now the switch against Douglas. In practice yesterday for both teams, both coaches talked about switching on those screens. This time Brown can't get inside off the head fake. Rebound obviously going to be a key. When Duke has been able to rebound tough, they have come out the victor. Yukari Figs, who was so sensational in the semifinals, she starts with a three and can't hit it. She didn't Swipes miss, her with a rebound. She didn't miss too many in the, the pre-warm-up. Hit five of seven that established a new semifinal record. Duke with a 2-0 early lead. Because of the similarities of this team, it reminds me back in 1975 when UCLA's John Wooden last championship team played Denny Crum. The same system, just who happened to execute it better. And as a matter of fact, Purdue's last basketball championship was 1932 when Coach Wooden was player of the year, a three-time All-American at Purdue. Figs works around the screen, tries to penetrate on Howard, but she traveled. And both teams have to be a little tight starting this game. Van Gork touches it for the first time, kicks it right back out. Now she got it back from Howard, and she's fouled by Cooper. And don't you think Cooper is big enough to, to give Van Gork some problems? At 6-4, no question. And she's got good feet as far as getting a lot of movement. But she doesn't score a lot of points for this team. She does a lot of the things that you don't recognize like that, getting rebounds. Screened Van Gork off very well. White McCarty. 17-footer drains it. She had a tough shooting night against Georgia. But she always seems to come through in the end, doesn't she? Gail Gustin for his talk yesterday in practice saying, we want them to hit the outside shot. Don't get that penetration because that's what Purdue is so tough on the offensive end is driving to the basket. Peppy Brown. And there's another travel, Erickson. Fun to watch these teams, especially Purdue, they're like a well-oiled machine. They don't panic, and who's ever hot, whoever has the open shot, they take it. And of course, we saw Duke against Tennessee. If they were ever going to panic, that would have been the time. Cooper gets her first bucket. Here's a steal, White McCarty back the other way with the miss. Schweitzer to Erickson, one on three, and she'll wait for help. In the last game against Georgia, Hillary Howard and Nicole Erickson did not have any turnovers, but it's different already. You can see Purdue defensively kind of really sagging back, forcing Duke to take that outside shot, but they're still trying to go inside. Erickson lost it again. Yukari Figs took it from her. Yukari Figs putting the defensive pressure on Erickson. Erickson kind of panicking a little bit. A little bit of a shove off right there because she loses control. She pushes that arm out, and when Figs goes down, that's where the push off is called. Four turnovers already for Duke in four minutes of play. White McCarty double team. And Erickson quickly picks up her second. There's Lynn Dunn, who coached Purdue until 1996 and assembled just some tremendous talent, including most of these Purdue players and two of the starters and the leading scorers for Duke. Ann. Well, they've been 9 out of the 10, they've been to the Final Four. It's, they're all interesting stories how they recruited them. And Michelle Joseph, who was sitting next to Lynn Dunn and also in this picture in the yellow, was an All-American and has all the records at Purdue. But the way they've recruited all those players, as a matter of fact, Kari Figgs, 
committed to Duke, called Gail Gestenkor and said, oh, I'm coming to Duke. Then called Purdue and said, no, I'm going to come to Purdue. And then had to call Gail Gestenkor back and said she was going to Purdue. And of course, Gestenkor was an assistant for seven years. Cooper with a miss. Outlet to Howard does a nice job to recognize Figs right in her way. And all those years, I should say the first year was not under uh, Lynn Dunn, but Lynn Dunn kept her there at Purdue. Schweitzer has it blocked. Great stuff by Duhart. White McCarty for three. She won't miss many open looks like that. Fresh 30 for Purdue and Figs backs out with it. White McCarty over a screen. That was a two and she missed it badly. Hillary Howard pushing it. Bodies fly as White McCarty got in the way again and Douglas back the other way for the Boilerman. Another turnover by Duke. They look a little rattled. That's five in five minutes. Figs. Purdue is the type of team that does like to take charges. And so far, neither team shooting well at all. Pepe Brown, who had the first basket, gets another. This time she didn't try the drive, just took the wide open jump shot, and that will be available to her all night long. We see the same team sag off. As again, both coaches said yesterday, we'll let the, the opponent take the three-point shot, go ahead and beat us from there. They'll put some pressure on them, but they don't want the penetration. And Duke is in that triangle in two. Figs, nice dish inside to Douglas, but it rims out for her. Fight for the rebound, that's going to be a jump ball. Possession arrow will give it back to Purdue. How about this one? Lynn Dunn was recruiting Michelle Van Gorp. Van Gorp was also considering Vanderbilt. And because their birthdays were on the same day, Lynn Dunn said, we were destined to be together. <laughs> May 10th. Coaches will use anything, won't that's they? That's right. Lob it low to Cooper over Van Gorp. She forced it. In the last two games against Tennessee, Louisiana Tech, Purdue has done a wonderful job just screening and get a body on somebody. Right now, they are not concentrating on that. Figs out of the corner. Peppy Brown got her hand on a rebound and knocked it out of bounds past White McCarthy out to out McCarthy out and to Purdue. Purdue has missed its last eight shots. Switching up into the man-to-man. -man. Erickson's got two fouls. She's got to let Douglas go. Douglas is left-handed. They worked very hard in practice yesterday. Duke did as far as trying to concentrate on making Katie Douglas go to the right. There she crosses over and then comes back with a nice little scoop shot. Van Gort picks up that foul. It's her first, the fourth team foul. And Douglas, one of those great free throw shooters. As Purdue is a fabulous three, uh, free throw shooting team. And Purdue so far just can't find that rim. Well, as, as much as the anticipation was in this game, you never know how the fouls are going to go, how the jitters are going to go as far as people turning the ball over, missing shots, and that's happening right now with both teams. Well, the jitters are alive and well. And yet both teams, the composure they both have coming in to this final game. Save. Douglas leans in. Offensive foul. No basket. Van Gork comes back to help on the press. Howard against Figs. That's a pretty good matchup. And then Howard again. Out of control. Lost the ball. White McCarty. Pulls up and got the roll. Hillary Howard, who doesn't score a lot of points, she sees the lane, but all of a sudden the defense came right over, and then she just froze. Both these teams, seniors in the backcourt with White McCarty and Figs for Purdue, Erickson and Howard for Duke. We played seven and a half minutes and have only a total of ten points so far. 6-4 Purdue, Van Gort to the lane, nice shot. Against Georgia, that's all she did was turn to her left, which is her right shoulder. But I talked to Pat Summit after the game, and she said she can go as easily to her right as she does to her left. Nice block out that time by Van Gorp. And Candy Crawford has checked in for Purdue. She played very well in the semifinals. And right now, Yukari Figg struggling with that outside shot. 
And Figs is going to be called for a hold away from the ball. The first All-American in Duke women's basketball history. She broke her elbow in high school and then had to have foot surgery coming into Duke. So she was not prepared to come back right away. She played in pain for a long time. Peppy Brown forced that one out. Forced that one up, rather. And now they're going to call a foul against Crawford for pushing off underneath. Well, look at Candy Crawford at 6-1, just banging Michelle Van Gorp. And a lot of people felt that this foul is on Van Gorp going over the back, but it was Crawford on the other side against Peppy Brown. Four team fouls on each club. And there's the three. Nicole Erickson with her first bucket of the ball game. She had 22 against Georgia and had been averaging 22 and a half in games against Old Dominion and Tennessee. It's just a matter of time before we're going to see any. Duke switching up their defense again. Looks like a 1-3-1. Parent number four is in for the Blue Devils, and we have a tie-up in the lane. Possession arrow will give the ball to Duke. She was, and also played AAU ball for her. She was promised number 22. When Nicole Erickson came in, she wanted number 22 and couldn't get it. Now, because <laughs> Michelle Jokas, Joseph was her favorite player. Now she's wearing it at Duke. Duke with a three-point lead. Schweitzer to Van Gorp, too high. White McCarty always seems to be in great control. Kari Figs around the screen. White McCarty, 11 on the shot clock. Behind the back and then spins and buried it. She reminds me of Larry Burke. Just does all the things that they say you can't do, but gets the job done. They say that she is more as well known in Indiana as Larry Bird and Bobby Knight. Erickson, scoop oh. shot. Wouldn't go. Van Gork. We're really backing Van Gorp in. Douglas gets it to Duhart. Shot clock at eight. White McCarty rattles another one home. The lead is one with 9.15 to go. First half of play from San Jose, California. Brown. Oh, that's a tough pass she caught. Van Gorp right in the nose with it. Doesn't get rattled. She sets herself up so well. She sets her teammates up well. You see how the defense just sagged because the screens were down low and she just popped up. She doesn't go in full gear. She just real slow, real slow. You don't have to go fast all the time to get open. And she always seems to have that extra move. If the first one doesn't work, she's got something waiting. Figs outside directing traffic. Purdue trying to regain the lead. White McCarty is hot, and she knows it. No basket travel. I really like how Purdue has taken the ball out of Hillary Howard's hands. They're making Nicole Erickson bring it up, which will get her a little bit more tired off her shots. And now you see Rice bringing it up, too. But they've totally taken the ball out of Hillary Howard's hands. Lauren Rice into the game. As Ann said, she has had an impact on every game she has come into in the tournament. Erickson, they need her three-point shooting ability. Rice unloads because the shot clock was running down. And then Rice tips it away from White McCarty. They call, Gail Gessenkoy's calls Hillary Howard her little general. Douglas, too strong, and Rice with a rebound. Van Gorp asking for the ball inside. But you Aaron can, can't get it through. Shot clock's down to eight already. Aaron's not an outside shooter, and Purdue is just sagging off her. Rice. Tries a tough bounce pass inside, picked off. Here comes Figs, picked up by Parent. That was the 10th turnover so far on Duke. When you have auto glass damage, trust SafeLight. My customer really relies on his car's advanced safety system. You're right. Okay, slow down. So when he got a cracked windshield, he turned to SafeLight. We're the experts at replacing glass and recalibrating your vehicle's camera so automatic emergency braking and lane departure warning work properly to get you back on the road safely. And that means a lot. Schedule now. 
Safe like repair, safe like replace. If you're looking for the biggest Big Ten experience, then welcome home. The Big Ten Plus app, powered by Big Ten Network. Personalized with your pass so you get your favorite Big Ten sports and schools streaming and on demand. We're the home of compelling stories, the iconic games, hundreds of exclusive events you can't find anywhere else. Because when it comes to the Big Ten sports you love, there's no plus like home. Only on the Big Ten Plus app, powered by Big Ten Network. Download and subscribe now. Race for impact. It's Friday Night Smackdown on Fox. Listen to this place. Crowd is witnessing history tonight. Tap into network television's greatest spectacle. Check this out. Oh. As the baddest superstars on the planet are unleashed in prime time. Oh. All new Friday Night Smackdown at 8 Eastern on Fox. like another foul on Van Gork. That will be two on Michelle Van Gork. Nicole Erickson picked up two early. And Gail Gestenkors pleads her case to Teresa Dollum, one of the three officials, along with Bob Trammell, Melissa Barlow. The alternate is Barbara Smith. Our congratulations to them for their selection for this national championship game. It's tied, but they're getting other players going. Cooper, one out of two from the line, we're tying at 11. And that definitely takes the X factor out of there with Van Gorp and her size. Howard, good drive, got it to Pepe Brown from 14 feet. She missed it. Lauren Rice kept it alive. How many times has she done that in the tournament? The team's fifth. Howard will reset with the taller Douglas against the nearly lost. Schweitzer had to go flat out to save it. That's what Duke has done so well is off those cuts and they get the ball on the run. We talked about that earlier, Mike, in their games. They have not been able to do it against Purdue right now. It's been exceptional defense by the Boilermakers. Shot clock again is down to nine and now Rice will fire from the top of the key. Gail Gessenkor has called Rice over in the Georgia game because Rice had missed two easy shots and she said, that's what we set you up for. She said, she can really challenge Lauren Rice, and then Lauren Rice will go out there and play. Schweitzer picks up her second personal foul. Schweitzer comes out of the ballgame. She's disgusted with it. Van Gorp is already out. White McCarty misses the front end of a one-and-one. One. She's wow. an 80% free throw shooter. And Douglas missed two, and Cooper missed one. Duke has given Purdue multiple opportunities with all those turnovers, and Purdue has not been able to take a big advantage of them. They could easily be up by 10 points. Rice walks. That one hit the top of the backboard and will be out of bounds. Full court pressure. Plus, this pressure has really rushed them. They get their offense set up with 10 on the shot clock. But remember this Duke team played Old Dominion that plays a scattered, tough press. Then they come against Tennessee, one of the best presses around, and they break them easily off the pass and off the dribble. Shot clock at five. Up to Erickson with a taller Douglas in her face. Excellent defense by the Duke. And a loose ball. Rice has it, she'll reset. Howard gets a good look. Maybe shot it too quickly. Although you can understand why. <laughs> Given an open shot, they haven't had many of those. Yukari Figs spins out on the three. Well, right now, Purdue, Mike, they've done a great job on the boards. They've been keeping things alive. They've also been getting pretty good shot selection. Nice little back door by White McCarty. But she missed the shot, and Lauren Rice with another rebound. Rice doing a brilliant job with Van Gorp on the bench. Rice for three. Peppy Brown, offensive rebound. Too strong. Loose, and it comes out to Tiffany Young, who gets it to fix. Too strong, rebound to Parent. Or that was check it, Tiffany Young. And Parent brings down the rebound. 
4.15 to go first half in an amazingly low scoring game. We have seen them play much, much better throughout the tournament. That last foul, a big one against Purdue because it was three on Katie Douglas. You know, that's such a great point. But you also have to remember, sometimes semifinal games are better. Just like when the yep. NFL football games are going on, the Super Bowl is kind of a bust. And as much effort as the teams put into it and as hard as they're playing, it's not about whether they're nervous or not. Sometimes things just aren't clicking. Carolyn Peck said that Vivian Stringer of Rutgers said after that Rutgers-Purdue game that Stephanie White McCarty can breathe life into death. That's how good she is. Oh, and she did. They were, at one point, it looked like they were dead because Rutgers was really hammering Purdue. But White McCarty was lethal in the second half. Yukari Figs, who has not had much of an impact in this first half at all. White McCarty gets tied up, tries to hand it to Cooper, and there's a foul before the shot. Cooper had a pretty good game against Louisiana Tech, seven points and five rebounds in 21 minutes. She's hit only one out of three chances at the strike. And you think for Purdue it would be the advantage that it is a low scoring game. Howard to Erickson, she's playing with two. Howard can shoot. The three from Hillary Howard is a 39.7% outside shooter, and that's the biggest lead of the game. Only the second time that Duke has been able to penetrate like that and kick it out. Erickson's got a three, and now Howard has a three. There's the lob behind Rice successfully to Cooper. And here's that full court pressure again. They get up to Pepe Brown. Doing a great job of keeping it away from Howard. Right now she's being dogged by Kelly Kamar. So what does Howard do? Howard's got to try and do some backdoors or get better screens to cut off. Shot clock at seven. Kamar right in her face. She's able to kick it out. The three from Rice missed, but Parent was there with a follow. Duke would be the first three seed to ever win this tournament. White McCarty can't hit it. The follow is good by Cooper. Right now, she's just handling Lauren Rice inside with the absence of Van Gork. And that's good awareness by Purdue to be able to spot her up. Howard, a little stutter step, gets it to Rice. Duke, with all its foul troubles, would just like to survive the first half. Neither one of these teams running off a lot, fast break situations. But it looks like both are starting to crank up the offense a little bit. Figs throws it away. Duke to inbound with 1.14 to go in the half. Dangerous pass, they got it to Brown. And now Howard against Kamara. Erickson has to tip it back outside. Nice fake by Brown. And then she missed the shot and lost the rebound out of bounds. Heron on White McCarthy trying to keep her from getting the ball. Duhart, and somehow the ball got through. I still don't know how. When I see that Purdue is doing well on the penetration, they're using their roles. They're going to call the foul. But what's happening with Purdue on the penetration, I think both teams are switching, Mike. And when you switch, you roll to the basket. Purdue is looking for the roller. Duke is looking for the cutter. And if the person setting the screen would go ahead and roll, that would release the passer to give them a good option to get open. And the NCAA tournament comes from 1988 for both teams and that was 50 points Auburn and Louisiana Tech 31 to 19 in the first half we have a record coming here 22 to 17 and Louisiana Tech won that game that's their kind of game shot clock at 15 about a second and a half difference with the game clock Crowd wanted to foul, they don't get it. And White McCarty left alone for three, had the wide open look and missed it. Purdue with another chance. Figs 
against Howard. Tough pull-up jump shot. Knocked out of bounds with nine-tenths of a second to go. Figs at the buzzer. Catch and shoot, and she can't hit it. Duke shooting 39% with 11 turnovers. Purdue only 29%. They are 0 for 6 from three-point range. Figs and Douglas, no points between them. 0 for 9 from the floor. This is really stunning compared to the brilliant performances we have seen from both of these teams throughout this tournament. Figs trying to get by Howard, a runner, goes in. 22-19, here's that relentless full court pressure again. Brown against Duhart. Van Gorp for those two fouls is back in. Erickson playing in foul trouble as well. The other point you made too in the first half, Mike, was that Duke especially is getting the ball on the perimeter to non-shooters. They kick it into Van Gorp. She turns into a double team and forced it up. If she turns the other way, she has a clear shot. Figs racing down court. That's when she's at her best. And if you can't do it in the half-court game, maybe Purdue is going to try and get some running going. It is a one-point lead now. Schweitzer against Douglas, who's playing the three-five. Van Gort forced it again. It's blocked, but a foul call. Good play by Camille Cooper, just keeping her feet at 6-4. You think at 6'6 that Michelle Van Gorp could get that shot off. She went right into the defense, turning to the right. Erickson with a miss. Duke taking off balance shots, and if Purdue can continue to get some defensive boards, they can quickly get the ball up, and look at them set up in their half-court game. White McCarty for the lead. She can't hit it, and Schweitzer is knocked to the floor by Duhart. Neither team shooting the ball well. The, last, the worst that Duke has shot this year was against Connecticut. Here in San Jose, the very first game, 26%. And for Purdue, it was against Arizona, 37%. And Schweitzer lost control of the ball and called for a double dribble. A dozen turnovers against Duke. Purdue, again, with a chance to take the lead. Brown, their quickest defender, was on White McCarty, but she works around the screen. Yukari Figs has come out hot to start the second half. Van Gort kicks it to Howard. Ahead to Schweitzer. Nice kick over to Erickson, and they will call Schweitzer with a charge. Three on Georgia Schweitzer. She had a career-high 22 in that upset of Tennessee. Duhart down low, forced it up against Van Gort, but that 6-6 frame made her alter the shot. The crowd just waiting for somebody to explode offensively. Parent to Van Gorp, and that's the place they have to get the ball and she scores. Van Gorp now with six. And Purdue doing such a great job of taking the other options away. You get the feeling Van Gorp is the only place she can go. And basket of the game, she shoots that rope. Check it. She's, they, she had a foot on the line. It's a two. So the lead is still one. Pepe Brown lost it on the way in. And basically that's what I was talking about, a pick and roll. She set the pick, and the passes went to the wing, and she just rolled in the middle. Erickson out of the corner. Got the shooter's roll. We talk so much about the perimeter play of both these teams. Now it's up to somebody else to continue to play big for them. Douglas in the corner, Pepe Brown, good job to knock it away defensively. White McCarty to inbound to Figs. Figs loves to go to her right, wheels in the lane, the shot comes up short. Another rebound to Van Gorp. Look at four white jerseys sagging in, they couldn't get over there. Good balance by Van Gorp and a nice inside look. Parent robbed it inside. Van Gorp scores again, and Duke extends its lead back to five. Douglas, who hit her last three, misses on this. Duhart is there, and she is fouled by Pepe Brown. 
Duhart, only a 52% free throw shooter, hits the three-point play the old-fashioned way. Duke with the ball and a two-point lead. And they've gone into a zone. They're really sagging in on Van Gort trying to clog things up and maybe having Duke shoot outside. Look at you those can't skip take passes. Away everything. Those skip passes. Erickson, the shot clock at five. Van Gort, who hit a three the other night, tries one and short. Peppy Brown offensive rebound. How valuable has she been to this team in the tournament? And tonight she has five rebounds. Peppy Brown is the rebounder. She's their leading rebounder. Schweitzer to Howard. Brown at the baseline. White McCarty with a rebound. Purdue can tie with the two, take the lead with a three. White McCarty, look at that control. And Camille Cooper made that happen. She rolled all the way to the basket to keep the defense on her hip that opened it wide up for White McCarty to drive. Tied at 28. Howard wants the ball, gets it over to Erickson. Van Gorp into the lane, got it. Van Gorp into double figures, 10 of Duke's 30. Duke is just going to have to take it upon themselves, Michelle Van Gorp and Nicole Erickson, Erickson to say, hey, we've got to go at Purdue and score some points. And on the other hand, you've got to look for the senior leadership from Purdue. Yukari Figs with a long three. Nothing has come easy for either team on the offensive end of the court tonight. Howard trying to penetrate, pulls up from 15. Douglas with a rebound. Douglas all the way. Well, they let her drive all the way down, and she dribbled with her right hand. People know she's left-handed, but then all of a sudden she switched to the left side because they never forced her completely to the right. Brown loses it. Purdue's last lead was at 6-4. Douglas slices in, missed it, got her own rebound. Well, that's a tough shot. And she didn't hit anything, so it's surprising they didn't call a travel. The shot clock doesn't recycle, but it doesn't matter as figs. And some big ones, including that one that gets her club back on top. And it was like the other night. White McCarty, who struggled in the first half, ended up with 17 points. Oh, they're too good to hold down forever. Krista Gingrich is in for the first time. She's working in the backcourt, fouled by White McCarty. That's only her first. Three-pointers tonight. Duke is in only two out of nine. Purdue has missed 0 for 10. They are both among the best three-point shooting teams in the country. Peppy Brown to Van Gorp. Oh, what a nice block from behind. Van Gorp, a 60% free throw shooter, named the Kodak All-American this week, the first All-American in Duke history, misses the first free throw. You know, it really is an exciting situation. I think it's more exciting for the fans and everybody, too, because you know well, Mike, when you're out there playing, you're running against your brother, your father, your sister. Yeah. You're out there playing ball, and you're out there to win, so you block who your opponent is out. Yukari Figs, bucket and the foul. She knows she has the advantage because Duke does not have the players in there that are capable of handling her from the outside. And once she penetrates, she is beating even the secondary defense and Van Gort getting called for the foul. Figs can't complete the three-point play. The lead is three. And Purdue on an 11-3 run to regain the lead in this ballgame. Gingrich. And Cooper has done a great job on the boards. Comes down with that. Five rebounds for her tonight. Purdue forcing the tempo. They're pushing the ball up the court against Duke. Biggest lead for the Boilermakers, the number one ranked team in the country. Nicole Erickson's got to get involved in the offense of this Duke Blue Devil team. She's got to look for her shots. It's kind of tough when you've got Yukari Figs on you, though. To walk on Brown. 
24 points against Louisiana Tech. Eight tonight, all in the second half. White McCarty against Schweitzer. This is Douglas. And she walked. She's done a lot of the little things that don't show up in the stats, but really show up in the coaches' films. And that shows up 15 turnovers for Duke. Rice kicks it into the corner to Erickson. And then right through the hands of Lauren Rice. So Peppy Brown on the bench, who was a good rebounder, but has struggled also. She was their top scorer in the first half, but the concentration level right isn't there for Duke. Douglas to Cooper, and they'll call the foul. They also get the bucket. You know, this year on a trip down to Florida, Camille Cooper, not a great shooter, but everybody, there was an alligator outside their hotel, and she was the only one that hit it. <laughs> Throwing, for that. throwing stuff at it. And another turnover. A 10-1 run. Oh, and Van Gort got away with a little shove on White McCarty. Schweitzer and Erickson, the long-range shooters, have been unproductive. Schweitzer into the lane. Good help defense by Purdue. And then a save by Douglas in the corner. Under 10 minutes to go for a national championship. Purdue now up by seven. White McCarty just wouldn't fall for it. And this is where Gail Gessencourt said last year Michelle Van Gorp mentally would get out of the game. Calls wouldn't go her way, not only on fouls, but out of bounds. And she would kind of gripe about it and hang her head. But she, this year, has kept her head in the game. Figs, tough shot from the baseline. Yukari Figs, 10 points all in the second half. And this is the biggest lead of the game for the nation's top-ranked team. Duke has broken this press, and we talked about them breaking the press against Tennessee. There, Nicole Erickson's got to look for that shot. The offense certainly better for both ball clubs in the second half. Figs taking it all on her shoulders, draws a foul. Figs, who has never gotten the publicity that her All-American teammate Stephanie White McCarty has gotten has never been bothered by it, and she always talks about what a wonderful person that Stephanie White McCarty is. They're like Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. I mean, those two are so close, and as Brett McCarty was talking about, they need each other, they're so good for each other. White McCarty on the three-point shooter, Erickson, gets a screen. Back to Van Gork. Erickson recognizing the mismatch inside with Van Gorp after White McCarty's rolled off on her on defense. Purdue right now really seems to be in a flow of their offense. Cooper blocked by Van Gorp, and this will be a foul on Duhart. The lead is six with 8-18 to go in the game. Mike Patrick, Ann Myers, Jennifer Azey, our entire ESPN crew. Glad to have you with us from San Jose. It's starting to heat up here. They're working that two-man game right there. Easy shot for Van Gorp. She missed it, but great job by Schweitzer to kick it back out. Well, Van Gorp took herself away from the backboard. Van Gorp again, this time over Figs. 15 for Van Gorp, and Duke comes right back. Douglas with a great drive and missed the shot. I don't think she could believe she was that wide open. Purdue has just done a good job attacking Duke on that transition defense, and unfortunate for Douglas, but she comes out smelling like a rose right now. White McCarty slaps it away. Douglas back on the attack. White McCarty slices in, really forced that shot. 7-0-4 in county. Erickson for three. Cooper with another rebound. It's a good two-man game, but the other players for Duke, they've got to come down and do something for Duke. Figs nearly lost it, keeps her dribble. Douglas, that's a three. Douglas has seven, and that shot was huge. And it's not like they haven't had their looks tonight. Figs and White McCarty have both had some open shots. Howard 
can hit the three, given the chance. Schweitzer. She misses the three, and the ball is out of bounds out to Purdue. Purdue with a seven-point lead over Duke with only 6.27 left to go in the ballgame. But ever since Carolyn was little, she has wanted to coach in the NBA. She was a big Philadelphia Sixer fan with Dr. Julius Irvine, and so now she's gets her dream to coach in the professional ranks. Douglas working with a right hand. Collision. <laughs> Douglas shot clock down to five. That missed everything. Peppy Brown with a rebound, and she's fouled. Duke desperately needs to get its offense back in sync. Only two players have scored for the Blue Devils in the entire second half. And they're going to continue to play that two-man game, but on the weak side, Duke's got to get some rebounds. Erickson back to Van Gork. Those are the two people. Peppy Brown wide open in the lane. Missed it, but got it back. And she draws the foul on White in the party. Well, she'd known him forever. I got to meet him at the ACC tournament for the first time this year. He was a basketball player at Cincinnati. Huge hands. Peppy Brown with another rebound and draws another foul. Her dad came over from Ghana on a, on a soccer scholarship to Clemson. She misses the first free throw. She gets another with 524 to go in this game. Hits the second. The lead is cut to six. This is the time of game when you have the feeling the White McCarty is just ready to drive a stake through your chest. And this also in watching Purdue, they're very deliberate. They are taking their time. Look at that pass. Setting everything up, a very unselfish team, but they know that they've got a handle on this game right now. Cooper has nine. Check at 11. She only averages nine and a half a game. The lead back to eight. Erickson's had a tough time against Douglas. Well, the spacing has not been good for Duke to get the ball inside to Van Gorp. She is coming out so far that's closing up the gap for the passing lane. Shot clock down to three. That is not Peppy Brown's shot. I think mean, Carolyn Peck has done a brilliant job. You talked about the adjustments that a team has to make at halftime. When things haven't gone well, Purdue has made the adjustments. Purdue has done a better job setting the screens, and they're attacking to the basket much better than they did in the first half. And Carolyn Peck said, this team, we've got 16 partners. Everybody on the bench included, no matter players, coaches, everybody is a partner in decision making. And White McCarty is down and hurt. She is writhing in agony on the floor. This is a five on four possession. And from the way she is going off the court and almost unable to put any weight on it, and Carolyn Peck giving Kelly Kamara, the 5'7 freshman, a pat on the back. She's like, you got to come in here. But here she squares up, and you see the defense come underneath her. And there you see, I think it's Lauren Rice on her underneath, shoe. came down on the shoe. And White McCarty continues in tremendous pain on the sideline. And now they can't look at their All-American. Somebody else will have to pick up the slack. You're going to look either for... You gotta look Yukari at Corey Figs or Douglas. That's the fourth foul on Erickson, and Douglas will go to the free throw line. An 82.1% free throw shooter. The husband of White McCarty comes back out to see about his wife. Douglas with a couple of free throws. 349 left. The lead is seven. Purdue has increased its field goal percent shooting. 38%. They've hit only one of 13 threes, but those 18 Duke turnovers have been the huge difference in this ballgame. That really has killed Duke because this game has been pretty even because of the poor shooting and, and rebounding has been pretty even, but the three-point shooting has been terrible and shot selections, and uh, but the turnovers, and a lot of them have been unforced turnovers. White McCarty with ice on her ankle. The shoe is off, and they're trying to retake her ankle, but she is in a lot of trouble. And that's the warrior she is, and she wants to come back into this game. 
Kamara is in for her, dogging Howard. There's the screen. I, I don't think Van Gorp hardly touches it. Kamara hits the free throw. Kelly, a freshman from Sherrillville, Indiana. And Michelle Van Gorp really has to watch herself on fouls route. She's got to stay in the game for this team. Erickson bringing it up. The Blue Devils down by eight. Erickson left alone, takes the set shot. Carroll with the follow and missed it completely. And there you see Stephanie Mike McCarty limping back. Well, she is in obvious distress trying to get back out on the court. And as much as she wants to come back, Mike, you also have to realize, too, and accept that you go out there with that kind of ankle, you're not going to help your team. This is the 23rd straight double-figure scoring game for Katie Douglas. Douglas makes it a 10-point lead. The man-to-man -man defense has been terrific for Purdue. The, Purdue has kept the ball out of the ball handlers and the shooters' hands, and they put the pressure on. Great pressure right there by Figs. Yukari Figs is fouled by Erickson. That will be five on the senior from Fullerton, California. 17 against Tennessee in that huge upset. 22 against Georgia in the semifinals, but held to eight tonight. Figs makes an 11-point lead. Gingrich comes back in for Duke. They need all the three-point shooters they can find. You really have to give credit to also this press. Really disrupted Duke. They did not break it as cleanly and sharply as they would have liked to, and then they stopped running their offense and quit attacking after they broke it. Gingrich back out to Rice for three. She can't hit it. Peppy Brown, offensive rebound. Duke's got to be in a hurry now. Howard launches one. And it's out of bounds to Purdue. And Duke not getting the breaks either. There have been several, it appears to be multiple touches that have gone out, and they certainly haven't gotten many of those calls. But it's Purdue's defense, not the officiating, which made the difference in this game. There's a reach-in foul on Brown. Mentioned the last time they won... It was in 1932 with John Wooden, a Purdue alumni, and Carolyn Peck, the only other black woman to coach in a Final Four in a championship game was Vivian Stringer at Cheney State. She also was in a Final Four with Iowa, but Carolyn Peck would be the first black woman to win a national championship. And Vivian Stringer came close with Rutgers this year. They had Purdue down. 56-42, Gingrich into the lane, forced to shot up. A lot of contact, no whistle, and then Douglas is fouled. She has a dozen tonight, and this is a tough team to foul because they're brilliant free throw shooters. And you can compare that game to the men's Duke team when they lost to Cincinnati, Cincinnati. early on in that tournament. Defensive pressure has just been tremendous. Gingrich. Leans into one. Cooper with a rebound. And it's total frustration right now for the Blue Devils. This also would be the first time that a Big Ten team wins an NCAA tournament. This game has become so dominated in the last four years by the Lady Vols of Tennessee. And, of course, their fans and a lot of other casual fans disappointed that they weren't here again. But this has to be good for women's college basketball the in general. The parity in women's basketball is there. There's no question that the Tennessees, Connecticut, Stanford's receiving great exposure for the game, but there's a lot of other good programs in the country. Uh, you can see their figures right there. And Carolyn Peck only in her second year as a head coach. And in the beginning of the season, the two seniors went to Carolyn Peck and said, we are behind you. We want you to coach us. Even though you're going to be leaving this school, we all want to go out champions together. And boy, did this pay off. Gingrich, baseline blocked by Cooper. But she has played big in this game. 
Howard against Figs. Back to Howard, a minute six to go in the game. Howard for three. Those were the shots that they needed earlier, desperately. The threes, but the defensive pressure by Purdue would not allow it. And Purdue just calmly handling the pressure. Figs, fouled by Peppy Brown. She has just been magnificent. Got to be very, very proud tonight. Purdue has hit its last 12 free throws, and that's all they have had since Stephanie White McCarty went out of the ballgame. Free throws. Gingrich for three. And saved to Douglas. Good play by Duhart. 24 seconds to go in the game. This is the time when all the sweat, all the pain, that all disappears. All you can think of is we're the best. And Purdue is 34-1 and, and national champions. Purdue in a game that was much closer than the final score would indicate has won the national championship.